So I, I don't think I'll share the screen unless uh, someone would, would like me to. Well, I think everyone here now has copies of Bhagavatam. You got it. You're good. Yeah. Okay. But I'll, I'll make it so you can uh, share the screen uh, if at any point you want to. Okay. So we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 9, Text 21. Canto 2, Chapter 9, Text 21. Text 21. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 So we'll start with the Sanskrit word by word. Varam. Maraya. Maraya. <clears throat> Badramite. Badramite. Baresham. Baresham. Ma Abhi Banshitam. Ma Abhi Banshitam. Brahman. Brahman. Treya. Treya. Parishrama. Rishrama. Pumsam. Pumsam. Mad. Mad. Darshana vid avadi. Darshana vadi. Varam varaya bhajram te. Varam varaya bhajram te. Varisham avivanchitam. Parishama Vivanchitam Brahman Shreya Parishrama Brahman Shreya Parishrama Pum Samma Darshana Vadi Pum Samma Darshana Vadi Varam Varaya Bajamte Varam Varaya Bajamte Bare Shama Bivanchitam Bare Shama Bivanchitam Brahman Treya Parishrama Brahman Treya Parishrama Pum Samma Darshana Vadi Pum Samma Darshana Vadi Varam Varaya Bajram Te Varam Varaya Bajram Te Vare Shama Bivanchitam Vare Shama Bivanchitam Brahman Treya Parishama Brahman Treya Parishama Pum Samma Darshana Vadi Om Samadarshanabadhi Parambaraya Bhajramte Parambaraya Bhajramte Vareshama Vivanchitam Ramanshreya Parishrama Ramanshreya Parishrama Pum Samma Darshana Vadi Pum Darshana Vadi 
Varam Varaya Pram Dram Te. Varam Varaya Bhadram Te. Varishama Vivarchitam. Varishama Raman Treya Parishrama. Raman Treya Parishrama. Um Shama Darshan Avadid. Um Shama Darshan Avadid. Varam Varaya Badram Te Varam Varaya Badram Te Varisham Abhivanchitam Varisham Abhivanchitam Brahman Shreya Parishrama Brahman Shreya Parishrama Um Samha Darshanavadi Um Samha Darshanavadi Varam Varaya Badram Te Varam Varaya Badram Te Varisham Abhivanchitam Varisham Abhivanchitam Brahman Shreya Parishrama Brahman Shreya Parishrama Um Samadarshanavadi Um Samadarshanavadi Varam Varaya Badram Te Varam Varaya Badram Te Varisham Brahman Shreya Parishrama Brahman Shreya Parishrama Um Samma Darshinavadi Um Samma Darshinavadi I'll go to the synonyms. Varam. 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 Benediction. Benediction. Varaya. Varaya. Just ask from. Just ask from. Badram. Badram. Auspicious. Auspicious. Te. Te. Unto you. Unto you. Varaisham. Varaisham. The giver of all benediction. The giver of all benediction. Ma or mom. Ma. Mom. From me. From me. Abhivanchitam. Abhivanchitam. Wishing. Wishing. Brahman. Brahman. O Brahma. O Brahma. Shreya. Shreya. The ultimate success. The ultimate success. Parishrama. Parishrama. For all penances. For all penances. Pum sham. Pum sham. For everyone. For everyone. Mat. Mat. My. Darshan. Darshan. Realization. Realization. Avadi. Avadi. Up to the limit of. Up to the limit of. Translation. I wish you good luck. Oh, Brahma, you may ask from me, the giver of all benediction, all that you may desire. You may know that the ultimate benediction as the result of all penances is to see me by realization. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. The ultimate realization of the supreme truth is knowing and seeing face to face the personality of Godhead. Realization of the impersonal Brahman and localized Paramatma features of the personality of Godhead is not ultimate realization. When one realizes the Supreme Lord, one does not struggle hard to perform such penances the next stage of life is to discharge devotional service to the Lord just to satisfy him. In other words, one who has realized and seen the Supreme Lord has attained all perfection because everything is included in that highest perfectional stage. The impersonalists 
and the pseudo mystics, however, cannot reach this state. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gananjana Shilakaya Chakchon Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deva Gauravani Pichmane Nirvajusa Sanyavadi Parshat Padesha Tari Okay, so um, this part of the Bhagavatam we've been hearing Krishna and uh, Brahma having a, speaking with each other, having a conversation, meeting face to face. So, Lord Brahma has has uh, come into existence, found himself on a, a lotus flower, and, and to do some investigation to try to figure out what to do. And uh, he's vibrate. He hears the the syllables tapa tapa so to, he's knows he needs to do some some penance some austerity so he performs this penance and austerity and and then krishna gives him the instructions to uh for creation and then so it's been a long time and uh brahma has been performing these penances and Krishna is pleased, very pleased with these penances. So we, we've heard earlier, Yoga uh, gave the class. He, Lord Brahma is shaking hands with uh, Krishna. Krishna is shaking hands with, with uh, Lord Brahma, thanking him, so congratulating him on his, on his work, his penance. And um, so there's Brahma seeing Krishna face to face, shaking hands, and um, so Krishna wishes him good luck. Wish you, I find, find that mm, I find that interesting. Good luck, and uh, don't know what the the exact translation with that is from the word to word. But Krishna is probably Shreya. Shreya means like ultimate success i that's that's where i think Prabhupada's getting well um uh, uh badram is auspicious shrey is ultimate success so there's uh, at least two words there that seem to indicate good luck it's good yeah Wish, wishing him well he's congratulating him and wishing him well for his you know penance and, and work he's very pleased we just think krishna is very pleased personally um and he says, Brahma, you may ask from me, he's, he's letting him know that I'm the giver of all benediction, and I'm the one who's in charge, you know, so you can, you know, so anything, any benediction that anyone gets, it comes from me, so you can ask me directly, you're in face to face, so what an opportunity here, you know, I'm the one who gives all benediction, and you can ask from me for a benediction, all that you may desire, and, but as a good, uh, almost like a good salesman he says i'll let you know that the best the ultimate benediction uh as a result of all penances is, is to see me by realization so lord Rama has already achieved the ultimate benediction he's letting him know you've already you've already reached you know the pinnacle you've already reached have success as a result of your penance to uh to have see, to be face to face with me you've 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 already won but uh he's still he's offering them you can ask any, any all that you may desire so um and Prabhupada is is clear that this is possible for us to um to please krishna in this way 
to see Krishna face to face, to shake hands with Krishna like that. It's possible in this lifetime. Uh, it's not a cheap thing that um, I think Dear Govinda spoke about this in a previous class. It's not, okay, if God is, exists, just come to me now, just appear to me now. And like, we don't expect that of, you know, mundane, you know, average people, you know, in this in this world. So why would he expect that of God? Like, well, if God's real, you know, let me see it. Let him prove it to me. It's not a cheap thing, you know, that this, um, to, um, like, what kind of, uh, that this is the ultimate realization, the ultimate benediction. So naturally, uh, so anything that's worth that's of some value, and some um, some worth is take some effort to achieve or take some effort to receive or some work or some penance or some some kind of sacrifice. So we we know that naturally anything of value you need to uh, give something of value in exchange for or work in some way or give some effort or some some attention some energy. Um, at the same time, um, there's things that we don't need to work too hard for. Uh, that's like Jesus and Prabhupada teach that um, that God takes care of the birds and the and the animals and provides them with what they need. You know, as far as subsistence, sub subsistence food and water shelter and eating sleeping mating defending those things will come automatically we don't need to work hard for those so there's actually not too much value in those things that those things will come automatically sometimes they'll be better or worse you know sometimes it's hot sometimes it's cold sometimes we'll have you know better sleeping and sometimes worse sleeping sometimes you know, better eating, worse eating, you know, but, um, but those things we don't need to struggle hard or work for, or really, uh, those things come automatically. And so, um, but for something like uh, ultimate realization of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, it requires some, something of, you know, give something of value and so we can see in the material world that we want to want to achieve something, we want to attain something, we want to have something, then we need to you know offer something of value, whether it's our time or our money or our effort or energy or some kind of service. We need to render some kind of service. And so um, we can see the kind of service that Lord Brahma performed. To it, it's a very very big service. He, he gave a lot, a long time, a lot of energy, uh, material creation. It's quite a big quite a big task. And um, so we, relatively speaking, we have it easy by the grace of Srila Prabhupada and the Prampara coming directly from Krishna. We have um, we have it relatively easy. Uh, we don't need to create a you know a material manifestation to please Krishna. That we have a different we have a different process by the grace of Lord Chaitanya, Krishna Himself, the combined combined form with Radharani. That we have um, a much more realistic and achievable uh, path to get this ultimate realization of the supreme truth of knowing knowing and seeing face to face the personality of godhead so that by in this age um these big uh penances and austerities they're not they don't work so well just we don't have enough time to do them and we don't have enough attention or uh, mental capacity or austerity you know, they just don't work very well for us in this age but what does work very well is uh sankirtan sankirtan yagna yagna means sacrifice so the sacrifice 
the austerity, the penance for this age is Sankirtan, chanting, glorifying Krishna and his pastimes and his paraphernalia and his associates and his sincere followers. That's a Godhead. You know, so Godhead, like uh, Dear Govinda also recently, we speak about Godhead and it's like the kingdom. So Godhead, um, just like the king is within the kingdom and the king is the center, the person in the center of the kingdom. So Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead and Godhead in uh, Godhead includes not just Krishna, but Krishna and all his expansions and associates and uh, paraphernalia and pastimes and um, and his you know, pure devotees. So glorifying the name and the fame and the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That's our yagna, that's our penance. And it's, uh, maybe it's, whether they say we have it easy, we have it simple because it's not necessarily easy um, because of the nature of this age and the nature of our desires and hearts. And the reason that we're here in this material context is because we don't want to glorify the personality of Godhead. We want to glorify ourselves. We want others to glorify us. So it's like, uh, it's the exact uh, reason that we're here is, is, is what we need to counteract with the glorifying. And we can see that the um, really Sankirtan Yagna is really the only uh, religious process, congregational chanting and um, glorifying God. So whether it's any church or any uh, mosque or temple or uh, really any, something interesting about uh, organized religion, at least in America. I just saw that, that they said like an all-time low. Pe people's um, people's identification and uh, belonging to a religious organization is at an all-time low. Uh, well, I don't know if it's all-time low, but it's a very low. It, it kind of peaked in the 90s. Um, and then... Uh, so it's like it, like I, I know I should have looked up the number before, but it's close to like fifty or sixty percent or something, and it was much higher than that. And it's, it's dropping, so we can see that there's um, a tendency to, um, at least in this age, in this time period, to to go, you know, to not go against to, to go against these uh, or organized religion you know, being a part, a member of a church or something like that. At the same time, we see that really the only religious process is to gather together in, uh, in numbers and to worship the Lord, whether it's singing hymns or reading from scripture or singing songs or doing some kind of meditation together, some kind of retreat gathering together to do meditation, you know, strength in numbers, right? That's so um so these so that's established that the the process for this age is to congregational chanting and glorifying of krishna of god and that's universal <laughs> and then um and so and then we have this you know at the same time and at least in america we have you know dwindling you know uh Att attendance or membership of organized religion and churches and things like that but you know my my experience perhaps it's anecdotal and uh and maybe some speculation but but i think we can know from you know from scripture also that uh it's not that people aren't interested in the truth you know are interested in the genuine process of religion the, you know, a science of self-realization, I think, uh, if anything, people are probably more interested in that or more, you know, looking, more genuinely searching for a 
you know, genuine, uh, genuine essence of religion, you know, so religion, uh, you know, true religion is like what we're saying, true religion. Uh, so there's Dharma is translated as religion and, but there can be, you know, uh, temporary dharmas, you know, based on this body and based on this lifetime. But then there's Sanatan Dharma. Sanatan Dharma means the eternal Dharma. So Dharma is, you know, that which cannot be separated from a thing, like sugar is sweet, or fire is hot. And so our Dharma is to serve. And then also another way to look at it uh to understand dharma or sanatan dharma is occupation so it's just activity it's the natural uh activity and occupation it's just what what the what the soul is meant to do it's what we're meant to do you know eternally so our sanatan dharma is loving devotional service to the supreme personality of godhead to be to be a servant that's our that's our nature that's our dharma to be a servant and then that that service is is perfect whenever we're engaged in the loving devotional service to the supreme personality of Godhead. So that's really the the true religion, the only the only religion. And then there's, it can look it can come in so many different ways, and it has come down in so many different ways according to time, place, circumstance, and and uh, language and culture, and meeting people where they're at, basically. That. Um, just like there's all different there's all different grades available uh it's like the goal in the material world the goal uh you know is to um you know the material world the goal is to make money and you know, have a family and enjoy and, and have friends and family but there's so many ways to do that you know you could go to uh, you could go to get a phd and uh you know, make make money that way or you could just go to a trade school or you could just start working out of college you could start your own business so there's there's so many uh ways to achieve those goals um so also with the the the, the goal and the the ideal in spiritual life is to uh, attain this ultimate realization of the supreme supreme truth and so there's different there's different ways to do that, and there's different there's different stepping stones, there's different different uh, different ways to get there according to the our physical nature, according to what we're ready for. So the Lord is very empathic, and His representatives in having varieties and and, and options, you know, to meet people to meet people where they're at. And um, so, so yeah. I said so. My sense is that um, this this kind of uh, disinterest in organized religion it's actually a, it's an opportunity. It's a it's a it's a very it's an opportunity. Um, if you look at like there's the market inefficiencies. So like you know, in good business and good investors, they look for like, okay, where's the Where's the inefficiency? Where's the uh, where where you know people overcompensating for it? I can I can take advantage of you know the the place you know where people aren't you know putting all their you know, people are putting all their eggs in one basket over here. So I'll put my eggs over here because uh, you know to take advantage of that. And so I think that um, I'm doing some speculation here, but I think it can be backed up by by scripture and from Prabhupada's example you know, in the 60s that um, people were disillusioned with the institutions of America and in the Western culture, just the disillusioned and uh, not trusting of the institutions of America. And that's what hippie culture was like a, was like a uh, reaction to that and was like a, um, maybe it's a kind of an immature if we look at it in a way, but it was a reaction just to reject reject that and just whatever peace love and just do whatever I want and um, so Prabhupada took advantage of that transcendentally you know exploiting a market inefficiency well here here is a group of people who are giving up their trust like because 
it's actually so like we can see like the hippies even though they're kind of you know degraded in a, in a in a material sense in terms of their habits or their consciousness or whatever but at least they weren't attached and had all their trust and faith in this kind of american dream ideal material you know life you know they at least had enough sense to like give that up to re reject the reject the material life because if we're just if we are you know kind of blindly putting our faith and trust in material life and material arrangements and this institution and these ideals and uh, work hard and, and save money and, and retire and enjoy, you know, and go to heaven. If we're kind of blindly following those things, then um, we're, we're not as open to, you know, to, to something else as beyond you know, this ultimate realization. If we're attached to the material uh, concept. So at least these hippies, they weren't attached to that, the material, you know, structure and ideal. So they had, there was an opening there. There was an opening there. They had given up their trust and faith in, um, in society and in, in like that kind of organized society, the institutions. So Prabhupada, here's, here's somewhere to put your faith. Here's somewhere to put your uh, trust. And here is the institution to uh, put your trust in that you can that you can put faith in. So, I could say, similarly now, there's a there's a trend of uh, people not wanting to put their trust and faith in organized religion in a church and in an institution and like that. And we can see there's good you know there's reasons for that. And um, and so and at the same time. We know that people are always, everywhere else, always searching for Krishna. We always want this ultimate truth. And in, in this time, in this golden age, Lord Chaitanya's, Lord Chaitanya's golden age, Lord, Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement, that there is souls constantly bombarding and, 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 and coming that want to take part in, in Lord Chaitanya's movement. So it's, we know that everyone's searching for Krishna and specifically in this age, there's souls that are just so eager and so ready to join Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan party. And they're just, they're just waiting. They're waiting for an invitation or they're waiting for um, the opportunity. And so this, um, so there's opportunity here that, that with, with so many people um, not wanting to, uh, you know, kind of rejecting organized religion, being a member of a church. There's a, there's opportunity here, is especially for something like what we what we're doing here, what we're doing this morning, and what we you know Satvatov, uh, the Satvatov style of bhakti yoga. That there's um, that people are going to be attracted by a genuine a genuine path to realize the truth, a genuine place to put their trust and faith. Uh, a person like Prabhupada is completely spotless and pure that you can you can trust and, and take shelter of. Personality like Prabhupada, a prampara like our prampara. And this process of um, that we're doing here you don't need to you don't need to join anything you don't need to and it's, it's Prabhupada's program you're not doing anything different here it's Prabhupada's program just whatever you're doing uh add chanting add Krishna you know whatever you're doing that's fine and good you can keep doing it but then add add Krishna and add chanting and then you know see where it goes from there um so I think that's an opportunity. So the um, Sankirtan, that's our penance of this age. That's our, that's our, uh, if we want to achieve what Lord Brahma has achieved here and having, you know, shaking hands with Krishna and, and having Krishna wish him good luck and, uh, and asking what, what benediction do you want? And, um, then our process is Sankirtan Yagna. And um, specifically, I know in a previous class, Yogavinda was emphasizing this. And I remember Gajendra, you were moved by like, oh, Yogavinda is really 
imploring us to to do some service to you know some kind of preaching work you know that the lord chaitanya's mission is a service and preaching mission um there's some missions that are not there's some uh past that are not you know service or preaching trying to spread you know missionary it's not not missionary work but this is a missionary um movement and um you can see that something i appreciate that is that that missionary spirit of and that anybody can be a missionary that we're all missionaries i think in other in other um like in Christianity, you have missionaries and you go on a missionary mission and things like that. And you can, but there's maybe some separation of like, well, I'm not a, I'm not a missionary. And also there's another, in in, in, there's also can be a distinction between like monks, like a, living a, a monk lifestyle and, and, and things like that. And <clears throat> what I appreciate about Krishna consciousness being a true Vaishnav is that it's all included that, um, and, and like even with like the varna ashram the varnas you know the varnas um you know brahmins and satriyas and vaishyas and sudras that vaishnav is transcendental vaishnav lord chaitanya said i'm neither brahmin or vaishya or sudra sanyasi I'm, I'm you know vaishnav so vaishnav is transcendental to all these and includes all of, includes all of them, so that we can be, uh, you know, we can strive for living Brahminical standards, Brahminical lifestyle, and have a business, and and you know, do work and have have a family, and be a, and but still be a, a monk, a, kind of a monk lifestyle. That's you know, the um, a true Vaishnav, you know, in, in Grihasta Ashram can be can be living like a Brahminical lifestyle, like a monk's lifestyle, a missionary lifestyle, and not have to give anything up like that. It's like a, we're, we're getting away to really, to really uh, live these ideals and these standards of the, you know, Vedic, the Vedic age of the you know, highest standards of human life. There's a way and a path to do them you know, where we're at now. We don't need to give up anything. And um, and so I appreciate that about Vaishnavism. That I remember when we went. Um, that's the only time actually I've done book distribution. Actually, you tried to do book distribution. We went with you know Malini over to St. Augustine, and Malini heard Malini. Or maybe she was telling us, or she was saying to people, you know, we're missionaries. We're we're, we're missionaries. I was thinking, I'm not a missionary. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a I'm not doing a mission. I don't think of myself like that. And I was like, no, wait, I, no. Then I was appreciating that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, you know, because I had a conception of a missionary is like a different category. That's a person who's doing something else. You know, they're doing missionary work and they're, you know, they're missionary, but we're all missionaries. That, that's what Prabhupada wants. And that's what this, this movement is about is that we're all missionaries. We're, we're all Brahmins. We're all monks we're all you know uh you have the sannyasi spirit you know not to take sannyas necessarily but we all have the sannyasi spirit that this idea of uh true it's like the true essence of all these varnas and all these ashrams is included in 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 vaishnavism and being a vaishnav and that we can attain the essence of all these positions or these roles um by being uh a, by being by by endeavoring to be a pure vaishnav in the in the spirit of of Srila Prabhupada, Lord Chaitanya, like that. So that's our that's our penance for this age. We don't need to manifest the material cosmic manifestation like Lord Brahma. We just need to um chant the holy names of the Lord and glorify the supreme personality of godhead that's kirtan kirtan means glorify so kirtan can be chanting and singing with instruments the names of god it can also just be a conversation 
that we have with a neighbor or someone at the store where we praise God in some way or giving God the glory, you know, it's, um, that's also Kirtan, you know, chant, reading, reading Prabhupada's books is Kirtan. Like we're doing Kirtan in our mind. If we're silently reading, we're, we're doing Kirtan in our mind and, um, the vibration of Prabhupada's writing is pure kirtan. So this, to just do kirtan always in all different forms, that's our process. That's our penance. And it sounds pretty nice, can be simple, but it also it, is, it can be challenging just because of our nature, because our nature is to uh, our, our material nature. Um, I, yeah, it's, Listening to previous classes, the, the Ganeshan was talking about the chitta, the chitta, the the uh, the uh, when the soul when the soul first comes into the material uh, manifestation, that there's the chitta, that chitta, that kind of is part of the subtle, uh, very subtle part of the material covering. And, it, and anyway, I'm not going to go into all that because it was, but it was very fascinating. But so we. Um, Well, that was fascinating, and I forgot what I was going to say about that. But um, the um, so that's a we have a subtle, you know, subtle material covering the false ego. That um, as as we're we're in this material world, we're covered by these subtle material elements. We were talking about the chitta the other day, uh, the devotees were. And um, so we have this material covering. So, because our, our natural state, <clears throat> our pure state is that we can't forget Krishna. We, we can't, we, we cannot, we can't not glorify Krishna. That's our natural state. Because because the nature of Krishna is all attractive, therefore, if we're in our pure unadulterated state, then there, we, we can't be not attracted to Krishna. That's the nature of all attraction, of, uh, of, being, of, of possessing all the opulences, that our natural state is that we, we can't forget Krishna. And um, we can't not glorify Krishna. It's just... It's so it's just our natural state because Krishna is so supreme and, and ultimately glorifiable and all attractive. That's his nature. So it's just if if we don't if we don't have the material covering, then our natural state is just always in remembrance of Krishna, always glorifying Krishna. And at the same time, we have free will because it's not just like a robot that we are like pulled by ropes, you know, that we like in the material where we are pulled by ropes down th with the gunas, we're pulled by ropes to a, to perform material activities and uh, act out our material desires. And with with Krishna, where it's it's just the natural magnetism and and the natural state and consciousness of Krishna, the nature of Krishna, all attractive. So naturally, everything is attractive, and at the same time. We have free will so that we can choose not to be if we want to, but we have to, we can imagine it was, it was quite a, uh, quite a struggle actually to, to not remember Krishna. It's quite a struggle. Like it's a quite, quite a desire to, to, uh, to go against that, to go against that natural magnetism and, um, and, and Prabhupada says that we we go we had to we convince Krishna to let us come here that we had to that we had to convince Krishna to let us come here. It wasn't just it's not just a, oh I fell down I'm sorry you know, <laughs> whoops I fell down. We really had to convince. It was like uh, we it's like 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 Prabhupada gives an example of a father and a son. The son says I want to go and I want to go off and do this you know do this do this adventure or whatever. And the father says no that's not a good idea. I don't think you should go and. The son said, no, no, I really want to go. And the father knows it's not a good idea, but, you know, what can you do? The son needs to, wants to go. So eventually he relents. Okay, you can go. 
So it's 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 like that that we had to convince Krishna or his representatives. I'm not sure the the process, but the idea, the essence is that it wasn't just accidental. Like, whoops, my mind just slipped and I thought about something else. I thought about Krishna. No, because Krishna is so attractive that to you know to not remember Krishna. To, to, to have a desire to not serve Krishna, it takes some work and effort in that we had to convince Krishna to come here. So because of that, man, we're stubborn. We're stubborn. It's like, I made this decision. I'm here and I'm going to try to, you know, I'm going to, we can imagine, we, you know, we can see we do that in, in life. I do that in life. I have done that in life, that if I stubbornly make a decision that's, you know, someone else advised me not to, well, I'm going to make it work, you know, you know, my dad said this wasn't going to work. It wasn't a good idea. Well, I'm going to do it anyway, and I'm going to figure out a way to make it work. I don't want to go back and tell him that, you know, I'm, you know, it's not working or whatever. I'm going to try really hard to make it work. So this, I'm doing some speculation here, but um, the, the essence is that we had a strong desire to, uh, to not glorify Krishna and to, to not, to try something else, to try a different, you know, paradigm. Of instead of Krishna being in the center and and being um, glorifying and and worshiping and serving uh, Krishna and serving in you know Godhead like that that we wanted to try something else it was a strong desire because of that strong desire it's like a it's a I'd imagine on that chitta level on the subtle this most subtle level it's that's the strongest covering the, the subtle is more powerful than the gross. So it's on that very subtle layer, it's more subtle than our our mind and, and you know intelligence and and the senses. It's the, the false ego, and so the false ego is more subtle than those things and more powerful than those things. And so on that very subtle level, just covering the our pure our pure state is that very very strong desire to, as Prabhupada says, lord it over material nature. We want to be the Lord over material nature. So it's a very simple process to, for us to, um, to attain the, the essence and the results that like Lord Brahma is. We, we have it a lot easier than Lord Brahma. And at the same time, it's uh, due to our nature. It's still very challenging. <laughs> it's very challenging. So um, I have a few notes here. I shared about other things I didn't think I was going to share about, but I have a few notes here. Prodigal sons, Jim says we are prodigal sons. Um, so yeah, I don't really need to say any of these notes. I'll just say that, um, you know, just the spiritual master, um, so, you know, Brahma is, uh, surrendering and hearing from Krishna as his spiritual master. This is the beginning of our prampara, Krishna, the Lord Brahma. So it just so happens that, uh, Brahma's spiritual master is Krishna himself. Uh, so... Um, and for us, our spiritual master is uh, as good as Krishna himself. The spiritual master is um, to be worshipped and seen as good as Krishna himself. Not that uh, he is the supreme personality of Godhead, but uh, at the same time, we should worship him and see him as good as Krishna himself. And this is the, this is the um, position of a representative and a pure representative. So like if you get some decision that's made by a representative, it's as good as the, you know, the decision is from the person who they're representing. So if there's a, you know, some company or some uh, office 
or someone, a person, there's a person in charge, a CEO or, or whatever, and you're trying to get some, some decision made, say you have some dispute or something, you know, with a, with a company and you, you know, you may not go directly to the CEO, but you, you go to someone who's representing the CEO and is empowered to make decisions, um, empowered to make decisions on, on behalf of the CEO. And that's as good as hearing from the CEO because they can handle your, you know, they handle your dispute, whatever, you know, say you need some money back or something like that. So um, hearing from, you know, someone who's properly representing can be as good as the person they're representing. And it can be, can be the same that just like if you, uh, in legal representation, if you, if you uh, hire someone to be your representative and you, um, you give them the power to uh, represent you and make decisions on your behalf and um, that the judge or the other lawyers can just, they don't need to speak with you. They speak directly to um, the, uh, the lawyer, you know, to your representative who's more versed in the language of that, of that world. So Krishna is aloof, actually. Krishna is aloof from you know material world. And so Krishna has his representatives who, who can uh, speak our language and are, in, you know, in, involved in our, you know, material world. You know, the, 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 the spiritual master is not, um, he's in the material world. It's a lotus position in the material world, but not of the material world. He's not covered. He doesn't have that same intense desire to not worship krishna that we have so that that's we 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 came here because we have an intense desire intense um conviction to not glorify krishna and to not to not uh be a you know servant of krishna the this pure spiritual master a pure representative of god comes exactly the opposite because they have such a strong desire to worship krishna and to glorify krishna they come to the material world so it's the opposite we're both coming to the same place but we're you know completely different motivations and inspirations they're coming to to save to save to save the, the conditioned souls they're coming to save us they're coming to remedy exactly you know our situation so the um so the representative we have our representative who's uh, speaking our language and is close to us. He's, he's close to us, meaning like, um, well, similar to like Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya is Krishna himself, but he came in the form of a devotee to, to show, um, to, to be close to us and to, to, to give us an example that's closer to us and more realistic for us to follow. Uh, we're not meant to like follow Krishna's Rasa Lila pastimes or, you know, like that, or having 16,000 wives and things like that. So that's too far off for us to really, uh, you know, it's purifying to hear. We want to hear about it. We want to, through the, through, through the Prampara, we want to hear about it. We want to glorify that and chant those, those pastimes. At the same time, it's not for us to follow uh, Krishna came in the form of Lord Chaitanya to give us something to follow. So here's, here's Krishna himself. And, um, and he's, he's wait, rising early in the morning and he's reading Srimad Bhagavatam and he's chanting Hare Krishna. He's going on Sankirtan. Um, and then, and then someone like Srila Prabhupada is, is Krishna in the form of his representative with Shaktavesh, Shaktavesh avatar. He's descended it is like a, he is like a partial uh, representation, partial expansion of uh, Krishna himself in the form of the spiritual master. And he's coming, he's as good as the spiritual master because he's a, a pure, pure servant. He, Jesus Christ said that uh, if the son 
is as good as the father, then he should be accepted the same as the father. So that's, um, and Prabhupada gives an example in the material world too. We like that if the if the father is a is a bona fide doctor and 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 the and the son follows in his footsteps and 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 is good, as good as the father, then he should be accepted as the same as the same level of doctor or whatever like that. So um, the pure devotee, pure son of God, pure servant of God, if he's uh, if he's he should be accepted as 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 good as god but not that he is god himself there's a distinction there it's the there is a distinction there uh but it's 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 our process it's part of our process because we're worshiping the we're worshiping lord krishna directly by worshiping his his spiritual master by worshiping his representative the rep, like the spiritual master is there to it's a connection it's a it's like a, it's a pathway you know the prampara is a pathway it's for us to for us to go directly to krishna i think actually in a uh, a class recently um someone brought up or maybe it was ganesham ganesham brought up that um like just surrendering to krishna is not that's not effective in this age Prabhupada said that you know just surrendering surrendering to krishna is not effective in this age and what he was speaking about is like okay say if you just kind of surrender to krishna directly kind of you left your own devices and you just um you know just okay just surrender to god perhaps in a previous age uh you know if you just had that intention surrender to god there's enough purity within your heart and soul where you could just meditate on you know meditate on the heart and super soul in the heart and you could you know attain you know ultimate realization by um just surrendering to krishna but that's but but for us we need to surrender you know, it doesn't work so well just to surrender directly to krishna we need to have a, a pathway have a uh like a it's like a tunnel it's like a connection is it that's a proper is connect the connection so so Prabhupada's there to like receive our worship he's receiving our worship that's why we offer we offer we offer boga. Boga means enjoyment. That's food. And when the food is unoffered, it's enjoyment. It's boga. So we offer boga to the spiritual master, and then is offered up the disciplic, the chain of the disciplic succession back up to Krishna. Pra Prabhupada offers it to his spiritual master. His spiritual master offers it to his spiritual master up to the up the prampara to Krishna himself. So, and then it comes back down in the form of the mercy, the prasadam. So this is the process that the spiritual master is there to receive our worship of Krishna. And so Krishna receives it directly through the parampara. Because if we go, if we try to go directly to Krishna, it's probably not going to make it, probably not going to make it. But here's a for sure vessel, a for sure channel to get, to get that our, 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 our prayers, our, our chanting, our worship directly to Krishna. It's like a, it's like a delivery system, right? <laughs> not that the not we should see the, the the guru like that, but it's it's a sure way to get our message, to get our love, our worship to Krishna directly through the spiritual master and through the parampara. So, in that way, the spiritual master is non different from Krishna himself, and or at least we should see him that way or endeavor to see him that way because it's good for us it's good for us because um yeah it's, it's it's at least good for us in our process to do that and um so we can get so okay shaking hands with krishna i'm gonna stop i'm gonna stop soon shaking hands with krishna and um having Krishna's wishes, good luck and thank you, congratulations. You know, that's possible for us. Or maybe it seems, you know, a little too far off or a little too far out there. But we can get that from the spiritual master too. Like, like Lord Brahma is rendering a very practical service for his guru, for Krishna. He's, he's manifesting, you know, material 
the cosmic manifestation. He's doing material creation. That's a very practical service uh, for his spiritual master, just following his spiritual master's instructions. So we have that opportunity also that um, <clears throat> we can follow the the follow the, the instructions, very practical instructions. Prabhupada giving us very practical instructions. You can find them throughout his books and writings and letters and teachings. So he's giving very practical instructions. So we just follow them the same way Lord Brahma followed Krishna's instructions. And then we know that, we know that uh, Prabhupada will be pleased with us if we follow his instructions. And if we don't know that, then we have uh, representatives of Prabhupada that Likewise, that we can, we can, to each other, for each other, we can be representatives to Prabhupada, representatives of Prabhupada, that if we're, um, if we're purely following Prabhupada and representing his, his words and his teachings, that we have opportunity to be, you know, representatives of Prabhupada. Prabhupada said he wanted, I have a, I, I didn't share it, I copied him copied it to paste it to share it but i didn't share it yet but I mean, it's probably a well-known thing but Prabhupada says we need thousands of gurus we need so many gurus all over the world we we need so many gurus so sometimes we can be criticized that like oh you know you only want only uh it can be a criticism if people those are Prabhupada centered that um like oh because they're thinking that we're saying oh Prabhupada is the only guru uh and and uh, you know nobody else can be a guru and so and that's not what Prabhupada wanted Prabhupada wanted lots of gurus yes but it's different the Prabhupada wanted lots of gurus and that we can all be gurus and we can all be representatives of Prabhupada for each other and to each other and for the world um and the distinction that we make is that Prabhupada is the uh, guru with the capital G, the current link to the disciplic succession, the, the, you know, our current link to the disciplic succession, to the parampara, that pure vessel, that pure, um, that pure vessel, that pure spiritual uh, link to the parampara that is as good as God. So that's the distinction that we accept Prabhupada like that. And we can be representatives of Prabhupada and we can be gurus for each other and, and for uh, and for the world. And that's what Prabhupada wanted. He wanted us all to be, he wanted all of his disciples to be that level of like a spiritual, spiritual master. Why wouldn't you want your why wouldn't you want to be a master? I mean, to be a master of the spiritual topics, Prabhupada is teaching these spiritual, the spiritual science. A master is someone who's mastered the uh, someone who's mastered some skill or ability, and so this is a spiritual science. And so, yeah, we should all be striving to to master to master this and to be spiritual masters in the line of Srila Prabhupada. And we make a distinction that uh, to be the that pure vessel, that pure link to the Guru Prampara going back to Krishna, that person needs to be a completely spotless and pure personality um, like Srila Prabhupada. And for us, that is Srila Prabhupada. So we can shake hands. We can, we can follow in Brahma's footsteps by following Prabhupada's instructions very clearly, and then, um, and then we can know that, and if, and then we can know that Prabhupada is being pleased, and if we don't know for sure, we can ask uh, you know, other devotees, representatives of Prabhupada, and 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 they can tell us, they can, they can shake our hands and say, "You're doing a good job," you know, "Good luck to you," you know, like that, so that. Um, that's a, that's a practical way we can experience this um, this this shaking hands with Krishna and being being wished good being wished wish good luck 
from Krishna that we can uh, receive that from Srila Prabhupada and his sincere followers in a very practical way. And that's as good as, as getting it from Krishna himself because if it's coming down the prampara. So receiving, receiving it from the prampara, whether it's good luck or congratulations or uh, prashadam, mercy, then it's as good as it is coming from Krishna himself. Thank you very much for listening. Hare Krishna. I'm open for discussion and questions. Looks like Daru has his hand raised. Can you hear me now? Yes. Hare okay. Krishna. Hare Bo. Um... I guess I'm just, uh, when you were talking, it reminded me of the famous thing. I wonder if you heard of it, Patrick, about with Prabhupada, give an example. You're talking about the strong desires we have to do something, and Krishna allows us to do it. Well, it made me think of the famous one. Have you heard about it with the Prabhupada and his own son? Mm. No? Tell us. Tell us. Yeah, it was just a perfect example. I think it was his own little son was like wanting to touch the speeding fan in front of him. And so he, uh, so Prabhupada decided finally what he, it was going to hurt him. So what he did was he turned it down to the lowest setting. And then he said, okay, go and touch it. So when he touched it then, then he ding, you know, and it like it didn't cut his finger or nothing, but it just, you know, whoa, that hurt him a little bit. So he learned a lesson. And so it, it, have you ever heard that one before? Yes, I think, yeah, I have heard that, yeah, because if he would have just let the fan go on full blast, it could have seriously hurt his son, but he allowed right. him, he, he arranged a situation for him to learn a lesson, you know, in a way that, you know, not yeah. too painful. Exactly, so that's what Krishna does, and either that lower level or even a higher one, they say, I gotta get married to that person, or I, I gotta marry, I gotta get married, even just whatever, all right, he doesn't recommend it, but if you're gonna do it, then he'll arrange it so you'll learn your lesson, and uh, you know, if you, but if you real, anyhow, that's the sort of thing that I like about Prabhupada, about, about Krishna in general. So I just wanted to throw that out there. You reminded yes. me of that. So thank yeah, you. it's it's with love. It's with uh, it's with love that it's you know that Krishna, like we said, we, I've had to convince Krishna to allow us to come and try this, you know, try out this, you know, God project or whatever. And and it's not that Krishna just throws us throws us off. He he does it in a way that's loving. He he gives us still this full capacity to learn our lesson and to come back to him. And similar to like how Prabhupada, you know, was arranging with his son, that Krishna arranges it so that it's um there's still love. It's 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 it's, it's from a loving place. Right, right. And that if you really look at it too, you always see it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Krishna was trying to tell me not to do that, but, but I was so <laughs> persistent that I did it. But at least, thank God, he did it in a nice way where I learned my lesson, you know, where he, he could have done it a lot harder way, too. You know yes. what I mean? Tom, where it hurt me that much more. Anyhow, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Rohini said I had a nice class from, from before she left, I think. Anything else? Oops. Anything else? I had notes, but I didn't even didn't even really say. I went to a different direction. And Drew said, I'm grateful that I got to attend this class partially. I will leave now and look forward to hearing more. How are you, Krishna friends? Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, someone else was uh, had a question. I actually have another thing I was going to throw in. Um, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Just that, um, oh, what was it? Um, something about, well, oh, oh, yeah, because it made me think about uh, some people I know who, like, they, they, they never had kids, but but then the other devotees in their life, they say they wanted once they adopted, but then, you know, it was funny, I talked now, they had a lot of problems with that child though, you know, and the child has a bad upbringing and all, 
And so it was interesting how they were honestly admitting that, yeah. And I said, well, did Chris arrange in such a way that at least you got rid of your that desire, old desire that I have to have my own kid or I have to have a kid? And they said, sure did. <laughs> you know, it's like, I mean, I, they got to have a kid, but they also learned some lessons. It could have been worse, but I'm just saying, at least again, he fulfills whatever we want. It's wonderful. It's so wonderful. Thank Christian does that. So, so I'm ready. I'm, I'm hanging up right now. Okay. I guess I have to oh, Okay. Okay. Anyhow. That's all. That's all. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Hi, Krishna. Yeah. So he, uh, Krishna, fulfills our desires in a way that we can. Um, he fulfills even our material desires in a way that we can purify that material desire. There's opportunity there, at least to to purify that material desire, and um, and ultimately come to a more of a spiritual desire. And it's in a loving, loving way. Hare Krishna, thank you, Prabhu. Mm -hmm. yeah, I appreciated the point that you made. Like, uh, okay, so there's a more and more rejection of organized religion. At the same time, you're sensing, uh, you know, maybe there's more and more of an open spirit of discovery, and that's really the key point. Um, you know, Prabhupada was in India, where it's there's still pretty strong Vedic culture. And there's a lot of sattva, family values and community values and clean habits. I mean, if we look at India in 1950, early 1960, compared to America or Europe, very high consciousness. At the same time, for the most part, Prabhupada did not experience much of a spirit of discovery about this transcendental process of Sankirtan. Whereas when he came to the beatniks and the hippies in in the West, then as you said, the other, the consciousness, the habits, very degraded, tamasic, rajasic, very degraded. At the same time, there was, relatively speaking, quite an openness, a spirit of discovery to grab on to transcendence. And uh, so I appreciate it. You're saying that that you know, you emphasize that 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 same opportunity is there now, just kind of like inviting us, inviting us to share and reciprocate with that spirit of discovery, which social structures and institutionalization can often serve to, to stifle or crush. So less and less trust in religious organizations, social structures, government structures, and at least amongst many, many millions there is that spirit of discovery and that's just like, that's our, yeah, that, that's our opportunity to, to be enthusiastic, to cultivate this transcendental realization and share the Sankirtan process. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes, I think ideally it's, uh, you know, sattvic habits with and a spirit of discovery, but yeah, so that's not always the case. And and, and yet it is interesting, or at least it's uh, perhaps it's an example for us to be aware of and follow that um, that Prabhupada was in India like that and not not finding so many sincere enthusiastic you know followers and, and like that. and then in in America just because in the West because of the uh, because of the kind of starting from zero you know not not, not so much uh, but at least they had that i think yeah it's a spirit of discovery that comes from uh some kind of rejection or some kind of uh you know mistrust really you know because so they didn't have a they didn't have uh established you know, structure that they felt they could put trust in. And maybe so the people in India felt comfortable in an in a established, you know, social structure that they can, they can uh, you know, put trust and faith in and comfortable like that. And then in the upheaval of, of the age in America, that it was, uh, it was a vacuum. There was a vacuum that was created, you know, that, um, that Prabhupada could come and, 
and fill with with Krishna consciousness, and then that, and then and then taking that back to India, then there was an explosion in in India of of Krishna of of uh, Hare Krishna of Prabhupada's movement in India, you know, ba- from that. So um, that's I always find that very interesting. And then yeah, so the so there's like a there's a vacuum now of um, where to put trust, uh, moral and uh, moral moral authority, and um, yeah, there, there's a, there's a vacuum now, a, a modern vacuum. It's uh, that's I think similar parallel to how it was. There's quite a bit of upheaval now, and um, really, there's you were speaking about the media in a previous class. And like the, the media, you know, the degradation of the media that was an institution at one time you could trust seemingly, and now it's like very across the board, very little or low trust. And so you can see that's happening. The material institutions are crumbling and, and not and not having as much uh, trust, and also spiritual religious organizations. Uh, people aren't wanting to put faith and trust in those so but but we need to put our faith and trust somewhere so there's it's kind of creating this there's a vacuum that's people i imagine people are are eager to have somewhere to put their trust and faith and take shelter because if they can't take shelter uh where where to take shelter i think that's a lot of people i remember i remember it was early on in the kind of the lockdown pandemic really it was really heightened and I was speaking with someone and she was kind of envious. He's like, well, at least you have a Hare Krishna thing to, you know, to take shelter. And I, you know, I just, she's kind of like opening up to like, wow, it would be nice to have something like that because looking at the who to trust. And I guess they found somewhere, she found somewhere to put her trust in, so, which I think is a conspiracy kind of thing, you know, so she found somewhere to put her trust in. But at, at that time, she was not was didn't know where to put her trust and there was an opening there and Hare Krishna didn't get it conspiracy conspiracy people got the trust but um so that's because yeah it's very unnerving it's unsettling we you know how can we um operate in a kind of a vacuum like that where we we don't know who to trust and we don't know where to take shelter um it's actually like a terrifying almost like a psychotic kind of position to be in, to, to not, to not, to just be in that kind of fear of like who to trust, where to go for shelter. Um, right. So Gajendra, you have your hand raised. Uh, Hare Krishna. Good morning, Prom Prague. Thank you Hare very Krishna. much for the class. Um, <laughs> I've come to expect a really good class from you and I'm never disappointed. Thank you so much. I, there was something that you've said that you said earlier, something I've actually heard many times before, but somehow this morning I pondered it further. And it was that statement about how, um, you know, you can't demand God appear before you, even a material personality, you know, you can't go, hey, if the president really exists, uh, he needs to show up before me. I I feel like I went a little farther with that this morning. And it was, it's about, um, what is, what is the verse about, um, you know, as they surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly or Something along those lines, you know what I mean? Fourth, fourth chapter, text 11. Thank you. Thank you, dear Govinda Prabhu. So, yeah, my thought, my thought was, of, of course, if somebody really loves Krishna and their heart is pure and they're filled with love and devotion, you know, Krishna some gopi krishna may reward them by having their presence in the rasa dance but krishna is in the sense that he's treating everybody equally the person who's kind of 
demanding if there's a God. That's just such a challenge. There's really no no faith. It's really a a um, they don't want God to appear before them. <laughs> and so Krishna is not appearing before them is literally giving them what they want. Ah. So he's giving the gopi what they want. He's giving this atheistic challenge. Like they don't want Krishna to show up. They really don't. So Krishna yeah. doesn't show up. He's fulfilling their, rewarding their, <laughs> according to their surrender, which is zero. Right. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I just had that thought. Yeah, it's a deeper, deeper realization of of how Krishna is always, you know, fulfilling, reciprocating, and fulfilling and desires and, and with that with it, with everyone because yeah the the person who's demanding like that they're they want to be right more than they want to see God <laughs> if they're, they're really interested to. If someone is who really sincere and interested to see God, then it's like, okay, well, here's a process to do it. Uh, let me let me look for a way, you know, a channel to do this. It's yeah, because you just like like we say, material world, like to go and, and meet someone, to have someone, you know, face to face meeting. Then it's you know, there's a process to do it, and you got to go find the channels to get to communi mm -hmm. communicate with that person, you know. So it's like, well, here, so someone who's you know not sincere they want to be right about you know they're not being a god more so than they want god to actually appear in front of them so yeah. krishna's reciprocating that desire well for, fortunately there's a spectrum between the atheist and the <laughs> gopi and the, you know the sort of there's the other person who maybe doesn't absolutely know they could be just in a difficult place in their life but they're a good person and they may just even god if you exist I, i'm suffering i need help this this world is very difficult and krishna will re reciprocate with that by all of a sudden they run into a devotee or yeah. they just came up to uf and found the devotees distributing prasadam on campus or whatever and so it's it's really nice, but Krishna is always there to reciprocate. Mm. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Well, thank you very much for your attention and participation and um, hope you have a Krishna conscious day. Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.